Yes. And picked it up. Right? Yes. And I was just wondering when you do find a certain level of stone wall, I mean, will you be able to preserve them? And that would be lovely. Yeah, that, 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 that is the hope. Now, it's going to take blood, sweat and tears, yeah. literally. Um, and, and we will have to be very practical and realistic. I mean, there may be an issue where some parts of it, we just have indicative sections open and then mark the rest of it by, I mean, it could be anything, it could be gravel paths, could be shrubs, plantings, whatever. In England, there were a couple of sites that I was looking at where they've done this mixture of using pathways, remnant stone walls, planting, and all the rest of it to indicate the actual layout. So there's a lot of creative thinking needs to be done, but this is, this is in a sense over to you. I mean, we can do so much, and the student power can do so much to, to excavate and expose. But in terms of how it evolves and how it's used, that's your job. <laughs> it would be, and it would be love. Uh, you know, the ideal is to have it as a space that is pleasant to walk into, and by planting trees around the periphery and making a pathway, and then thinking of other uses for the space. I mean, it could be a really nice place to come to. One of the things that's interesting about it is the process is as interesting to visitors as the end result. Mm. So it is already a tourist attraction. There are already people coming. We've, uh, we've had a number of tour groups this year. We had um, 250 student ambassadors from the US who came High and they helped student. with um, picking, up rubbish. picking up rubbish. They came, they, they come over on these, uh, these uh, trips where they work with communities and everything like that. And we brought them to the site and they did a, a a survey of the site and we taught them about the site and <coughs> they did a little bit of mech detecting and, and cleaned up the site so it's already an appealing so the process is interesting at the end result just a little question did the prior wear black robes is that why it's called black robes? Dominicans today I mean originally when they were founded it was all black as I understand it today Dominicans wear a white robe but with a black cape black cloak with a hood and yeah Hence, black and black friars in London, you know, the, the, the Dominican as well. Yeah. Hi, Martina, how are you? Thank you for a lovely presentation and that you kind of brought your, I mean, all this work that you've been doing quietly behind Super Value, you're, you're bringing it out to the public where it actually belongs, really, and rightfully so. But I'm just wondering, you must have found a lot of fines and things like that, and what is your plan for that? Uh, that you have occurred, you know? Well, we, we have fines. We have we have a whole variety of things. Um, pottery would be quite common. Some iron, lots of nails, and it's interesting because the nails and uh, indicate. I mean, obviously, a lot of them are structural. Would belong to the roof of the church, and, and, and you know, you could think of if you think of the roof, all the massive wooden beams that must have been there, and all the slates. We have thousands of slates. Um, and they would all have been held on with a couple of nails, so with loads of nails. Um, we have fragments of stained glass, a lot of stained glass, and, and the distribution of what we're getting suggests that, the, that virtually all the windows in the church had stained glass, in, which in its own right is extraordinary. Um, what's going to happen to them? Under the conditions of any archaeological license, ministerial consent or anything like that, all archaeological objects belong to the state, de facto to the National Museum in Dublin. What I would like to see is that there's an exhibition space in Trim for these. So that would be part of our overall push. But that means that an, an appropriate space can be provided. Um, because the museum, the museum does lend out and there are plenty of centres around the country which house art, artefacts, but the, the, the location has to meet certain criteria. So again, another long-term project. But I mean, if you think of all the excavations that have happened in Trim over the years, it would be wonderful to have a centre here which could house a selection of, of the artefacts from all of the excavations. And there have been a lot of fascinating excavations in Trim. So, I mean, that again would be a hugely worthwhile project. Again, over to the community. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just on uh, raising your profile, uh, you know, uh, this is my opinion. You know, people come to Trim, the Trim Castle. Yeah. And they don't really come to land that, which is an amazing oversight <laughs> that has been allowed to develop by Trinitown Council, the Chamber of Commerce, everybody. And an organisation, you know, 
a gig like yours, which is obviously a, a sort of a respectable gig, etc. It's not just some sort of gig in the land. But it occurred to me that in Trim Classic, which is the office of public works, they should actually be actively direct anybody who might be interested to go up to that fire to see a <coughs> one aspect in detail of uh, the uh, medieval history of Trim, not just the big castle, to actually get down. And by doing that, of course, it would be very good for the town, because this would be the start of people who come to Trim for Trim Castle, not getting back into their cars and buses, and starting to permeate through the town with uh, sort of benefits for the local yeah. traders and yeah. everything else. I mean, we're, we're second, working on that. Yeah, and yeah. the second thing, the final thing is that, I mean, once the spring comes along, on the cows road, and uh, not so much good in park, that's, it's not so common, but also there as well, but certainly on the cows road, I would expect to see a large medieval banner announcing that behind, down this laneway, there is a hidden area where there is this road going on. Mm. And mm. I think that would, you know, the, the problem about where you are is you don't have front of front of yeah. yes. the front of the It's in the backlands behind back gardens of houses. But I'm quite certain there would be no problem going through the authorities to get actually a large appropriate. That is a very nice idea, idea mm -hmm. actually. But well, we have been working on signage. signage but a banner yeah. would be, because you could take it away everything, but yeah. yeah and uh, I suppose we have been working around, we completely agree with you, one of the biggest, it's, and it's not just a Trim problem, it's a, it's a Boyne Valley problem, it's a Trim, it's a Meath County problem that the, of the visitors, the hundreds of thousand visitors who come to the castle, most of them come on coach tours, and come they Dublin. come Dublin, come do the castle, go back in the coach, and back again, and it's, and for us to try and capture those, we've been working with the tour operators and say, can you not stay in Trim, and there's this reluctance, so we've been really trying to, to generate that, because but I those mean, ideas are perfect. If people could, from the castle, avail of the walking tours of Trim yes. and come up to the site, yes. you know, they would have such a much richer experience. But I find it wonderful. Wonderful. maybe it's my interpretation, but when you do go to Trim Castle, you know, you're just an ordinary country boy. There is nothing inside, at the entrance, into Trim Castle, for every visitor, every American, every French, and every German person passes by. There's nothing inside that says, there is more to trim than trim castle. Yeah. 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 I don't know if it's Abs absolutely. The, it's in the tourism plan for trim 2012 to 2017. But it depends on uh, people buying in on it and, and support supporting it. Uh, the OPW in recent years has become much more approachable and are now allowing communities to get involved. And just this week, we've started weekly tours, daily tours of uh, trim castle. Mm -hmm. um, I agree with your point that um, the castle, uh, people visit Trim Castle. This is what they want, this is what they, they see. Uh, visitors uh, are going out there and they're picking the high, play, the high points and they want to tick those off. So they want to see Trim Castle. There are a small number of visitors who do want to get down and do want to see the, the days and wants to want to wander down to Newtown on the walk. But a lot of them are, and uh, you know, a lot of them uh, uh, visiting Trim uh, aren't actually in coach tours. There are a certain amount of coach tours. In Newgrange, the vast majority of them are in coach tours. But in Trim, we've got lots of individual visitors. But they are also just really looking for to kick off Trim Castle. They've done Trim Castle and, and get into Trim Castle, see it done. Trying to attract them into the rest of the town. People have been doing that for, for, for years. The tourist office was down here in Main Street, and people wouldn't cross the bridge to come to the tourist office. Yeah. Okay. But Trim is not uh, is not unique in this problem. The Rocket Castle attracts huge numbers of visitors. Very, very few of them actually go down into the town. Mm. But just against that, and I would say in this a lot better than that, that you could actually have outside <coughs> the at Trim Castle town hall the space outside there. You would actually have so that whenever anybody gets off the bus, gets out of the car, gets out of the coach, as they go up that entrance to Trim Castle, on the right hand side, which is yes. the side, you would actually have an installation there which would actually uh, indicate, you know, that as well as the castle, there's new town, yeah. there's the yellow street. Absolutely, that's there. included in the proposal for the tourism yeah. plan, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, there, the walking there, the side would be quite good over. Just can I ask a question then?
Sure, sure. And you mentioned there about you seem for a extremely unfortunate that it was actually taken down. We're surrounded in the trim area by quarries and stuff like that, but there was there's no shortage of stone whatsoever. And it's amazing the irony of it. How actually did it from when the ribs order left, which they are lost control, how did it so quickly or how did it fall into hand for a quickly dismantled that? Well, well, if you, well, you think at the time frame, I mean the, the dissolution of the monasteries happened in the sixteen forties. 15, 1542, I think the order was signed. Um, the monks, the, the friars actually came back in the late 1600s for about a period of 20 years. They went off to Denour and, and they came back, much reduced. Um, the buildings were still in some repair but very dilapidated at that stage. And then when they left, that was it gone. So it wasn't until 1750. So you're, you're talking, you know, a considerable time span. 200 years after the, the initial dissolution. Um, and because, I mean, Bective was transformed into a private house. St. Mary's Abbey, the other steeple, was basically transformed into a private house. Um, the Franciscan Friary was transformed into a courthouse. And it was only taken down and uh, effectively demolished out of sight when the new, what was then the new courthouse, the Georgian courthouse was built in, in 1802 or something, thereabouts. So, you know, you, it's unfortunate that, 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 that the buildings in Trim, the religious buildings, seem to, to suffer this transformation into something else, in the case of Black Friary, basically a quarry. Uh, it's, it's just how it happened. Well, I mean, they're perfect. It's, I mean, why would you go to a quarry when you have cut stone, it's so close, it's so close and perfectly made and actually we've been very lucky in some of the, in the way some of the, the walls fell in the cloister that we have so much of the beautiful perfect stone because I'd imagine <laughs> that stuff would have been taken first so there is so, there's enough there to be able to do, to do really, really good, a uh, decent reconstruction. Just before I get to the second point, I know from the Franciscan's area of it was Parts that living around the area, you can actually see some of the some of the, the stone that was actually really interesting. It's actually see if some features could be found. You could tie it in. Take it back. <laughs> <laughs> the, the second part kind of ties in with two things, and you have the topographical survey that's there. That didn't cover the whole site. That's no. only the area that you have there. Would you have plans to try and do more of that type of survey? I'll just off the press. <laughs> I've just put in an application to the Royal Irish Academy for funding to do that, but I have no idea whether it'll be successful or not. Because money is so money is very tight. scarce, and heritage is heritage budgets will will always go easily. So, yeah. Yeah. but fingers crossed. Yeah. The last point, the last question I have is: like Trim Castle, we have renderings and drawings and sketches going back in time, and we have the models of it. Is there anything that would allow us? There is no sketchings. There is no nothing of what the priory. Not that I've been able to unearth to date, but there is one guy that I want to try who is apparently a mine of information. He's done so much research on sources in Ireland. Now, he may have come across something, but so far I've been, I mean, and it's interesting, even the down survey map, and I know that the depiction of Trim and that is quite schematic, but you can say, you know, there's the castle and there's the they, they don't have, and I think it's because the Black Friar was actually outside the town walls, but there's nothing that I have come across that, and I think it's unfortunately, it's because it, it, the buildings started to be taken down in the 1750s, because it's after that time that you get a lot of sketches and likes of Dunoye and people like that. It, it's just, it just, just well, happened at the wrong time. But the thing, what's, what's really nice about it is Ian has uh, just completed his master's degree on the site and, and we're, all these students that were, who are coming to the site are, are falling in love with the place and there's just going to be over more the next research. 10 or 15 years Hopefully, more and yeah, more and more research. So more. we've had, uh, I mean, gosh, how many returning students that we have from the States this year. We, one of our students, it was her third year, third summer in a row, coming back to the site. And uh, this interest, <laughs> she, yes, she got more than she bargained for. <laughs> then, that, that there will be a number of uh, research theses being undertaken at that. So somebody may, that might spark someone's interest, what, what the historical aspects of it. Uh, so that's one of the, the, the great joys about bringing all these students is you'll foster interest in the Dominicans or in Trim or in architectural fragments, whatever, but uh, there's, a, there's such scope for research in the site that... that that's, all, that's all we have. That's all we have. Yeah. So, Richard? I just wonder if you could say a bit more about that stained glass that you were finding. Uh, what kind of colours or are there any painted designs or 
Uh, so far, what we can see would be fairly t typical of the, of the period, which would be the kind of the Grisaille work. Uh, it's painted glass, and you would have the colours like red, uh, blues, you know, the, the fair, fairly much within the repertoire of what, what is known. Now, the fragments, unfortunately, like the largest one we have is about that size. And the thing about stained glass is once you lift it out of the ground, the deterioration is instantaneous. So um, a lot of the stuff that we lifted and thought, oh, that's great, you go, go back to it, you oh, my God, you know. So we now, one of, one of the tasks is uh, learning how to lift it and get it to a conservator or get it stabilised as quickly as possible. Um, hopefully we'll find more of it. Um, certainly when we ultimately go up the east end of the church, I would, I would expect to find a lot more. But, I mean, it's, it, it has been littered right around the place. Quite astonishing. Thomas Cusack you spoke of, that was the farmer that had the, oh, yes. the land around. Thomas Cusack? Yeah. yeah. I don't know, Tom, uh, not French, but Tom Bridge, sorry, not French. Uh, Mike, he was probably the ex checker, was he not? Yeah, was indeed. The, the Lord of the Ex There is a good article, I think, mm. in either the Irish genealogist or one of those. Yeah. Uh, they were the Cusacks of. Uh, where were they? They were from. Shop yeah. That's right. Yes. Yeah. The the pretty distinguished yeah. man. He got a yeah. lot. Of, he got a lot of. He got a lot. And there was some because there's a tie-up with the Bishop of Meath, who I think was the original person to whom the land was assigned. Right. And then there's a mention of, of Cusack, right. and he seems to have sublet to another guy called Lloyd, I think. Yeah. You see, Thomas Cusack got lots of these confiscated yeah. yeah. monasteries. Yeah. He yeah. was in the government, so. Yeah, so he was a prime to position to. But there might be some reference to some of his papers are coming to Michael mm. Q. Yeah. yeah, there, there, there is. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, yeah. 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 Now there is. I mean, the 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 the, the extent of the, the monastery that we've done at the time of the dissolution. You know, yeah. again, it it does detail reasonably what was there. We know there was seventy odd acres of land, seventy two acres of land, and so on, which was a sizable enough holding. I mean, nothing like the Cistercians, but they were in a different category. But, um, but he was high enough to be married into. They were into gen general work. Yeah, uh, family, and I just wanted the woman. Their burial ground, Cusack's burial ground, is out in Trevor. Okay. In the shop, mm. and I wonder whether there might be a, a pair up somewhere. Yeah, there's a yeah. memorial to them in Screen Church, I think there is. Yes. Thomas Cusack, yeah, he's, yeah. he's pretty well. He's pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. There are so many avenues and offshoots, I mean, yeah. it's, it's really... If I'm interested, find out, like, you will go, I mean, the DNA completely yeah. true. Yeah, you yeah. Know. But there are people still alive, like, you know... Oh, there must be. Crew, they were married. And, I mean, Huzzy would be another family, family that was related, that had intermarried, and there, you know, there's so many around, so, yeah. But you'd only have to get one to get the interest of the whole tree. Yes. It's <laughs> 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 a very good point. <laughs> And they said that the headmaster was the Because I mean, it could be one way of promoting, you know, that somebody visits Mellifont and there's a, a special section displaying finds from Black Friary and it's an excavation they can visit. That's actually a very good thought. <laughs> we could follow that one up. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, it is all about getting the word out there. But ultimately, I think it would be fantastic for Trim to have a display centre for for. Science for the war there because I think that's been in the been talked about for ten years and everybody wants like trim wants trims, Navin wants Navins and Carol's there'll wants never be a me museum, <laughs> not for another but it doesn't yeah, necessarily be need a museum, it's a space, we're in a it's library, a space, exactly. we're in the library and here, I mean, I, a space I, my, my own library. firm view is that libraries are wonderful kind of kernels for, for, for things like this, you, you don't need a whole lot of space, you really need one very good exhibition case uh, with, with a rotating exhibition that you change the finds regularly and you have display cards and there's an awful lot can be done with very little space if it can be put together. So.
How secure is that site? <laughs> no. <laughs> that might be why it's a, it is a, ch it is a challenge. Um, because if you think about it, the site has been in use, is being used for walking dogs. As in, uh, like it, uh, you, I mean, in some respects, were were something that's that's arrived into a field that was in use. Yeah. Um, and managing that. And I mean, there's an argument to say that we are we are by opening cuttings and exposing the stone that that we are laying the site open to vandalism. And there has been a. A certain amount of vandalism. In fact, today we were up on the site, we were starting the, the, the covering up the stone marker. And as I was walking up to it, having walked up and down the path several times, I stopped to look at what looked like a piece of paper on the ground and realised that it was a notebook of my own that had gone missing after one of the last episodes of the cabins being broken into and stuff of mine being tossed around the place. And I had looked for it and couldn't find it. And there, miraculously, it was on the path, soaking wet with some of the pages ripped out. And I was just standing there thinking, there, there are days when you just go, Jesus, why am I doing this? When you come into the site and it's full of broken glass, or, and it's clear people have been in there drinking or whatever. And, and, and there can be a sense of that you feel that you're getting in people's way who would really rather that you just went away and left them alone so they can revert to the use that it, that it had. But I do feel that there are an awful lot of people who weren't getting the benefit of the space precisely because it was used for kind of antisocial activities. And that if we can gradually turn the tide of opinion and get more people involved, that that is the best protection the site can have, is that people know about it and are interested. And it's one of the reasons why we're working so closely with the schools, because <laughs> over the lifetime, I mean, the. Uh, yeah, the little the kids who are in primary school now may perhaps come as teenagers and they'll have the respect for it. And uh, the transition year students we're working with at the moment have been doing great work for us. And uh, a whole yeah. class of them have bought into this idea and really said, gosh, we're part of this. And it's them talking to their friends. And it's, it's not something you can change them right. I suppose other ways this site could be managed would be to put a huge big fence around it. And say, keep <laughs> and out. say, keep out and let the archaeologists work. And then when it's done, Open it up or but that's fence it off, but it isn't what it's about. And uh, you're not going to change uses of sites or what people's needs or requirements or people's engagement quickly. It's, a, it's going to be a slow process, and you work from the children up. Yeah, um, I'll have to congratulate you for that. Yeah, I think that's a great idea because you look at you go now, and Irish people don't go there anymore. Not that many. How could they break into like the cows? Into the thing? Into the cabins. Just just the, where there's a will, there's a way. They're, they're secure site cabins, but they with crowbars and... Yeah, I mean, there, and, and a window shutters wasn't, wasn't properly fastened one day, and, you know. Or, I mean, the, the first week that the toilet block was put on the site, somebody obviously spent hours trying to break down the door. Mm -hmm. uh, smashed all the windows, you know. So you do get that kind of thing. It's very disheartening. But you just keep going. Yeah, because um, our houses are kind of at the back of a particular place. Now that Kevin, I was there all summer. All oh, right. And um, I wouldn't have seen anybody around there now. Yeah. No, as you see, it, 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 it can happen in a few hours in an evening, and you wouldn't be aware of it. You know, mm -hmm. and that's when did we? Where we live now would be a lot of activity. We'd we'll be all passing up and down there. Yeah. But well, I, I, I spoke to one gentleman who told me that he had come across kids having a savage go at some of the cabins. Now he, he had a word with them, but quickly backed off. He contacted off. the guards. He, or contacted, he contacted the guards. Yeah. But by the time the guards came out, they'd gone. And I mean that is that is the issue. Like there yeah. are priorities on policing. And you're talking about them. like walking the dogs. Yeah. People did walk dogs there because. It was just rough it's down there. It's perfect place to walk dogs. When you That's look at it, like, what else would you do? Is it exactly. Like, well, you'd know you'd know no better. But there's no reason but why you'd have to walk But now there's horses there. What about the horses? Well, the horses are there by agreement with the council. And in, in fairness, but they are keeping down the grass, which is actually something I'm quite pleased about. Mm. They're also extraordinarily docile, and uh, you know, so have not caused any damage or any harm to other humans or. or or the site itself. So because well, they're really fenced off. Like the horses and, 
Uh, a man walking his dog. Like no, there's no problem with people walking their dogs. No. I mean, I'd be encouraged. Mm. Like, I would like to see more people walking their dogs. And one of one of the things that I would love to see is, is that we could have a complete safe circuit of the site. Yeah. So that people could walk in comfort. Mm. I mean, that would be an ideal scenario. Because the more people who come in to actually use the place of an evening in the summer, the safer the site is. It's a four-acre space. Yeah. I mean, I know the fencing as it was this summer was awkward in that it didn't leave room for a circuit, and that's something that we'd have to see next year if the horses are there again. I'm not sure what's going to happen. And we would always have to have some sort of demarcation of the area we're excavating, simply for people's safety, because the cuttings can be deep, and we don't want anybody falling in. But I mean, the ideal would be to have that marked out, and then so people could just walk around it. Like, I would love to see people coming in every day to, to walk around and to use the place, and to think about what they want long term, and to talk to us and to the town council about it. And the kids are great to talk to. Yeah, they want their football pitch and their skateboard day. park, and they they have no problem coming and saying, "Oh, yeah. this is what we want," and in engaging in the archaeology. So, yes, yes, yeah. that's very interesting. But it, the whole point is that this field, it's not that we want to preserve the archaeology and mark it off. The whole point is this is a four-acre field in the town that Which should be a be beautiful on. parkland. Yes, so should be a beautiful parkland. Yeah, I'd love to see it turned yeah. into something. Yes, I'd, yeah. I'd love to see it myself. Yeah, it would be it would be fantastic. It's crazy having it just thrown there. Yes. It's a nice store, really. Absolutely. And if it was if it was a, a lovely space, you know, as said, people coming there would transform the life of the place. So that's that's the end. There was one time there was supposed to be a car park within there, mm. and we had a whole crowd of um, people objected. Mm. I don't know who was responsible for that. But they were going to put in a car park. Well, you see, to that. It, it is a national monument, mm. and national monuments themselves, the National Monument Service, would never give permission for that, would never agree to yeah. it, because, you know, that, 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 that flies that in the face the reason of, why it is. Yeah, yeah. So because it is a national monument, and because it is there for a site that is, it has a preservation order on it, there are limited uses that it can have, and what we're trying to do is to be as creative as possible around those uses, in a way that benefits the community. Because ultimately, you could say, you know, a park or allotments or a children's playground is of greater benefit than a car park. You know, when, when you try and weigh up what is the most benefit. Is it sacred ground? The, the, the church and, and, the, and the cemetery would have been consecrated ground, yes. And that's actually a point that I didn't bring up and it's something that interests me enormously, is how long the cemetery was used. Because clearly burial continued there for a very long time, but we also suspect, well we more than suspect, we're, we, we know that it was used as a children's burial ground. And it was possibly a burial ground for unbaptized babies. How long that continued I don't know, but we have at least five infant burials there now. Um, so it, 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 was, it was a place where babies, possibly babies, were unbaptized because of the law regarding limbo and, and unbaptized babies not being allowed to be buried in consecrated ground. It appears that this site was chosen. So there is a history to the site that might reach right into the 20th century entry. We really don't know. Um, it's important to point out that there's a reason why we're excavating these human remains. And, for example, the, we we're not excavating the graveyard. You dig them up, the bodies, are the bones? They're, they're, so a certain number of them, inevitably we do, because in, in trying to excavate within the church, we come across graves. And again, in the area outside the cloister, we hadn't expected to find burials, but we did. And once you disturb them, you, you, you are obliged to, to excavate them. them then? The bones, we, we hold on to them, that they, they, they will, they will, you know, at the moment in our own um, facilities, that they, they are examined. Technically, again, ultimately, they should go to the National Museum. But again, I would like to be making a case for reburial on the site. There is precedent for and that uh, is something human really remains to be reinterred on the site, which is, which is the natural order of things. But the reason they're being excavated now is because they're at risk if we don't excavate them. It's in the same way as the wall, the stone work that's there. In a couple of generations, every generation that, that passes, this is going to fall more and more into ruin. And there are barriers that are very, are very close, close to the very surface. Close to surface. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the cemetery, um, I, sa I said at the start that the, the precinct of the abbey would have gone right out to the Kells Road. Well, the cemetery would have been to the south of the church, so between where the church is and the town wall, which is the back of Super Valley. 
and would have extended probably all the way over to the Kells Road. So the house, some of the houses in Kells Road are probably built on top of the cemetery. And I've had people come to me and say, oh, sure, we were digging up bones in the garden for years. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you were. <laughs> so that's why. So that's why, exactly. So, I mean, the, 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 the cemetery extends quite far. So when you walk along the site, you're actually walking on the cemetery. But equally, if you walk down Castle Street, you're walking over a cemetery as well, because the cemetery of the Franciscan Friar was out over Castle Street. So just to get back to that, sorry, four acres. So you were just talking about the church there, and to the north of the church is the cemetery, south of the town wall. So it's all in that sort of uh, northern, north. Yeah, it's between the, the town wall east, and the church. Yeah, northeastern part, which is where we are at the moment. So it's four acres, but there's a lot of land then to the, uh, to the west. Yes. And, what, uh, and that is the National Monument? It's all the National Monument. So what was that? That was the influence of the Friary. The influence. So that's just what I wanted to hear. So, if it was the influence, I mean... Yeah, yeah, right, okay, there we are. There. Yeah, it's really the area, the western area. What's the dotted line there? That marks this, if you walk the site, there's this very visible yeah. raised bank. Right, yeah. And right. this area in here is also raised. Right. And I don't know what's going on in here. It worries me slightly. I'm not sure whether there's an earlier feature there or whether there was something connected with the, the friary there, but it's, 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 and now is actually a brilliant time to go in and walk on it because the grass is so low. Um, and if you walk over this, it's not, it's not perfectly flat yeah. by any manner of means. There's a lot of thinking of it that, you know, you're talking about uh, a green, you know, an active use of the site, whether it's sort of people walking dogs or anything. Now, obviously, I would surmise that the area to, uh, to the west and to the, well, to the north of the uh, dotted line, particularly. Yeah. yeah. That area there is probably the area that is uh, perhaps least precious, for want of a better word. And you did say there were the out gardens of the, uh, yeah. of the Friary. So, for instance, could one go through and do the initial examination uh, quickly? And then, for instance, actually designate that area up there as allotments. That's people, precisely what we would love to do. Because that uh, way you would be actually bringing back to the story. Yes, we want to do it as soon as possible. Bringing back people back in and in the current economic climate might be of some that's, that's, that's what I would love to do. And I mean, I know that this area was cultivated back during war. There you are. Um, part of the reason for putting the topographical survey was to, to be able to look in more detail at this area and to do some selective test trenching to try and ascertain what features were there. We did try a geophysical survey, but because the site had been used as a dump for so long, there was too much metal debris on the site, and the geophysics was very confused. Some features seemed to show linear features, which might have been just field boundaries for when it was gardens. But ideally, I would love to see, to start in this corner, and to see that turned into something, allotments, a, a community garden, even in preference to a lot, to a lot ones where you know it's, it's laid out as one big thing, but but all everybody who works there shares the produce. That would be a much better idea. Um, you could have some play space, whatever. And even if there is archaeology here, as long as what's going in is not going to go down, you could say right, it's preserved in situ. So you could put in anything, skateboard park. You could put in. You could build up soil and have a, have a, have a kind of a wonderland playground for kids, you know, where, you, where, where there are humps and hollows and hidey holes for them. Yeah. Five, yeah. fifteen years ago, you know, there was a football pitch there. Mm. Yes. There was a football pitch, but if I remember when I was growing up, we used to play football on them, and the council didn't put soil on it, it was level. It was exactly uh, for this gentleman's point in the head. Up here? Yeah, yeah. exactly where it was, because there's an entrance uh, from Tower View there. Yeah. And, I yeah. So you see, but this this is the point. I mean, if we can come back and say the archaeology up there is capable of being recorded in this way and, and then left alone, then it, it could be up to the, the council and the community to say, well, look, okay, we can by bringing in a bit of soil, we can level this area off. It could be a football pitch. It could be allotments. It could be whatever. But it's to start that ball rolling and to start with the possibilities. What could it be used for? Well, just since you had it up there, because I remember seeing it obviously in Joseph area report that just like in the port was in Shrimp. You see the really parallel ridges down there. No, no, to the left of the yeah. section there. Yeah. Yeah. They couldn't be ridged for it, could they? No. I don't know. It's, it's very, it's sloping. Yeah. Um, 
I, I'm not sure. It's 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 within the cemetery. So if it's rich in furrow, yeah, yeah, it's possibly yeah. post medieval. Okay, within the cemetery. Yeah. Yeah. So did you say it was the first Dominican monastery in Ireland? No. 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 Okay. No. I think it's the it's the seventeenth. Yeah, and, and, and as regards size, it was average, it was small. No, it's, it's big. big. Uh, the, do you remember the ones of Carlingford? The images of Carlingford there. How much bigger? 20%? It would be about 20% bigger than Carlingford. Than that. Longer. Like the church, we're, we're guessing at the moment, but the indications are that the church in Trim was about 60 metres long, which is huge. Now, Trim has a, has a history of, like, Newtown Trim had the largest church in Ireland. That was what, Noel? 150 feet long or something. Oh, no, more. I think it was close to... It's twice what it was the remains. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's... It's twice what, it, what the remains are there. It would have extended further west. I think it was about 80 metres long. It was huge. Yeah, it was huge. Biggest Long, longest church in Ireland. And you would, they would have been vying, I imagine. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, this would be, you think about super value and little. Oh, the glory of God, this, of course. With the Augustinians <laughs> and the Franciscans and <laughs> the Dominicans and would have been vying. the John Veal that paid for it? Or, or mm. what, what you're yeah. saying, this huge building was there. Like, who paid for it? De Jean Veal founded it. Yes. And there is a record in his will of a certain amount, 12,000 marks or something. It's a huge sum of money. And there is a record of other monies as well. Right. So, and, and he retired there. Yes. Yeah, he, uh, he and Matilda retired area, there, right? and when she died, yeah. he took holy orders. Yeah. Well, there's in this area, is that known, or is that...? Well, there, yeah, there's an interesting... Well, a lot of places do have a second cloister, but it looks like there's a second cloister up in here somewhere. Right. So sometimes you had second cloisters associated with kitchens or the, the infirmary. Yes. But equally, it could have been private apartments for De Jeanville, which then might have turned into the prior's house or whatever. So, I mean, it's all speculation, but it's great fun speculation. There's, there's no uh, remnants of the town wall. The town wall is actually... The town wall is buried. Yeah, but I think it was John Bradley in 1980, but I thought he had the line of the town wall down to the south uh, there. Well, the we would... There's, there's nothing visible above ground. Yeah. But the town wall would, would come along here. The Athboy Gate is just over here. Or what we're pretty sure is the Athboy Gate. And the line of the town wall has always been marked as being round about here, and then it turns south. And it would have been at the back of this, this area here, and gone down ultimately to the Sheep Gate. Um, but until we could get in there and do a bit of digging to see, because um, there's nothing surviving above ground, but uh, you know the stretch of the town wall, sure you were on the walk down to, by the OPW buildings. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's about a metre 80 surviving below ground there, mm -hmm. intact. So it's quite possible mm -hmm. that there's a good stretch of it there, intact as well. Let's finish with the fire. <laughs> <laughs> Before we go back and find town walls. <laughs> ah, no, we do a bit of everything. <laughs> Anybody else? So uh, just just pursuing that, what I said, what uh, I asked you. So it was an important Dominican. Uh, yeah. Now I have to do a bit of research to see, just because it was found by an important guy, who put money into it. I don't know how it ranked. With at that stage, I don't think that they had. Um, I don't know what the structure was like in Ireland at that stage. I mean, now you have your provincials and you have. I see what I mean, so, I mean, have, do you explore, say, its, uh, the, its origin maybe in France, that there would be records in the Dominican? Well, that, that is something, and, and, and what is known of the, the, the abbots suggests that you can see Frenchmen, 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 Irish, Irish, you know, that there was a, the initial number of them were, were probably direct imports from France. Mm -hmm. And another reason that we, that's an aspect we want to explore is because of the cloister, because of, because the form of the cloister is quite unusual, I think, in, in the Irish context. And we want to try and see where the inspiration for that would have come from. I mean, who was the architect? Who designed it? What were they drawing their inspiration from? It doesn't seem to have been anything in Ireland. Was it something in France or Italy? Who knows? But the, the thing about it as well, you see, it's, the, it's not just the stone, it's what you can build, you know, it's the story, mm. because, which has to be one of the amazing, amazing stories. So, uh, the person who Geoffrey John who found who founds it in 1263, 
after a long and successful career, going off to the Crusades, etc., etc., 40 years later, actually goes in and takes mm -hmm. the order mm -hmm. and becomes a monk and dies there mm -hmm. early in the 14th century. I mean, this is the sort of stuff that even if you didn't have even the story of something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So amazing. That story, yeah. that story and all the other stories that are, uh, you know, all to do with having the trip and there's so many. Yeah. It should be out here in the town, it should be mm -hmm. in the libraries, and it should be actively marketed. Yeah. by the Office of Public Works on top of their offering of Trim Castle. Yeah. Well, I, I, that is what would be good for the town mm -hmm. and it's not actually happening yet. It's beginning to happen, you know, the, the town wall, uh, it's beginning to happen, but I don't see a situation where if I came in from Dublin on a sunny afternoon and said that I am getting a package, you can go in the town wall, mm -hmm. you can go up to the active bid that is going on, you can cross over the river, you can walk to Newtown, and all of this will be just actually given to you. And it's the, a case of pushing it. And, 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 and the, the, you know, the, the result of that has to be good. Yeah. But I, mean, I, I think this is, this is the time really to push for that. And I, think, I think the doors are opening for that kind of It's also the responsibility of people like us. I mean, we're, we're trying to earn a living as we're doing this. This is a business. We're, we're, I mean, yes, we, we're lucky enough to be doing something that we love, but we're earning we'll a living. Pay the rent. We have to pay the rent. <laughs> Like everyone else, so through the tourism uh, side of it, we're working with other tourism providers. Say, okay, let's. Why don't we put a package together? Mm. And, and it's much rather than us going, oh, we're doing something great. Someone else should put us together with someone else. It's up to us to work to, with yeah. uh, people like the Boyne Valley Activities. Who uh, I think I think the day of saying they should do are over. Mm. You know, if we're not prepared to say it, we will do. Forget it. Mm. Sorry, just one last thing. I, you know, I don't live here, and, and I was we wanted to go to the Hill of War last week. Mm. Uh, I saw it on the internet. I was very enthusiastic on it, and we did actually get there, but uh, 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 against all the odds. <laughs> oh, against all odds. So we went to Athboy, and we took the sign Hill of War, and it says two kilometres. We got to the top of the hill. We went through because there was absolutely nothing, zero, zero signage on the spot. And we went down the hill and we said, no, 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 we've got to go back up again. <laughs> we missed it. And we went and we stood actually 15, 20 minutes and it was only after a little while, I thought it was a metal uh, style. Focus. And fortunately, <laughs> one of the New Agers had put this lovely sort of Celtic signage, you know, this mm. Mm. And a tiny little thing that says OPW, just pen, pen, not a Here's uh, another focus. felt marking yeah. on the steel and the, the reference number. And I thought, oh my God, this is unbelievable. Mm. I have a lovely photograph which, which I haven't, I was doing a bit of work over in Rathmave on Tara, again a very little known monument on the hill of Tara, and there is a fogra, Rathmave is divided in two by a town and boundary, and there is a fogra in both sectors, and I was looking at the fogra, you know, the OPW warning site in the, the otter section of, of Rathmave, and all I saw was this, uh, this concrete thing with a metal plate, where the actual writing is facing into the ditch, and it's entirely covered by nettles. <laughs> So I kind of go, okay. Now, I mean, in, in that instance, it's not a site that was easily accessible and so on, but there is an issue with signage. But again, it comes back down to the fact that we have to stop saying they should and either complain enough that something is done or do something else ourselves. Well, but the thing about the Office of Public Works in Trim is that the vast majority of people who come to Trim come to Trim and Castle. Mm. And that's the only entry point and exit point to the trail. And if you're not at the races in the ground, so at the entrance of Trim Castle, then you lose all the attention. Yeah, I, I agree, and, and I, that is something that is being worked on. To get inside there, you have to get in the permission of the office and the active involvement of the office. We're trying. Place. Believe you, you me, we're trying. To balloon it out. <laughs> no, it is, I mean, it's, and in some instances, there's actually a lot more willingness that one would give them credit yeah. for. So, you know, and we've had tremendous help on this side from Kevin O'Brien, who works with the Office of Public Works. You know, so credit for credit. Well, one of the interesting, I mean, you, you, I, have you all been to the site? Yes. Yeah. Well, <gasps> shame on you if you have. Um, you, we've talked about broken bottles in trenches and trenches, and you sort of go, and there is this sense of how can this be a tourist attraction? Because, yes, there's lovely archaeology going on. Being, but mostly it's overgrown, an overgrown hummocky field. <laughs> we had 
the Harvard Law alumni. Uh, Twelve uh, of them, professors, came over from Harvard, and we brought them to the site on a Sunday. And uh, I, I, I brought them in Ripley Park, and, uh, in there, and unfortunately, even though I'd been to the site on the Saturday morning, we, we were both inside, and everything was clean, we arrived on Sunday, said, here's our site, broken bottles everywhere. They rolled up their sleeves, got in, picked up Gateway, and they all cleaned up, and they loved it as a concept. And they said, this is so real. And it wasn't real in a patronizing, let's help these poor people here. It was actually, wow, you can see this, this is something that's happening. This is much more fun than going to a, an archaeological site that's been used for the that, that they go, yeah. oh, wow, and to see, to standing, oh, there's discovery going on here. And that's one of the... And transformation. And I think people really understand that potential. And, and that is something that, you know, we all need to, 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 to kind of take on board. It has some <coughs> potential, and it's up to us to realise it. And not to be afraid of it, and not to say, oh, well, you can't bring people there yet. You know, if you... When we're done, we'll bring people there. Yeah, that's, that's not... It's, it's now. Yeah, plus the feedback from the American students who come over here... Are they, they love it! They love it. In all the... Well, imagine if you're used to looking at the oldest thing you're looking at is 200 years old and you come and you stay in trim. I mean, they, they have a very, there's actually very interesting feedback from them at all sorts of levels. They love the hands-on, they love the learning, they love um, the age of the stuff, they get hugely indignant when damage is done on the site, but it, 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 it is immediately bringing hope to them the challenges of heritage presentation in a very real way, and that actually engages them more. Um, they have had very good comments with us and discussions about how to interact with the local community, because a lot of them, they're the ones staying in the trim, trim, they're the ones going out drinking, they're the ones who get to know people, and they're kind of saying, why aren't you doing more to put up a Facebook page, to, do so, you know, to, to actually get more people involved? So that's very good. Um, they would wish that there were more cheap places to eat in Trim. That <laughs> <laughs> they have all sorts of various comments about that, which ultimately we will be gathering. And like, because this is real stuff. This is very useful stuff. Well, next year we have, we anticipate well, what, between 50 and 75 students who will come for Don't an jinx it. average. <laughs> will come and live in Trim for an average of four weeks. That in itself, okay, these guys aren't high money rollers, but how many of last year's students, parents, families came and visited? And a third. So you get families arriving as well for a visit. And they all, they, they all really appreciate Trim, and you just have to say to them, it's not just about the castle, it's not just about this, but you say to them, every single street you walk on in Trim has its foundations in the medieval town of Trim. If you dig down through the pavement, you come across medieval cobbles. And this is exactly the same street pattern, and they just go, wow. So they know when they're walking through the town that they're taking exactly the same route as de Jeanville or whoever. And that is a big, 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 big thing. And it should be for all of us, you know, the fact that there's this longevity in the place is mm -hmm. extraordinary. So yeah, I mean, virtually without exception, it's a positive, positive experience. Even simply for a lot of them, say, the fact that they walk everywhere you know, is, is, is wonderful. <coughs> the walk down to Newtown Trim, that, that kind of thing, they love. I mean, and again, it's something we've got to build on, is, is actually greater offerings for the students in terms of like availing of the sports centre. They didn't know until this year that there was an internet cafe, you know, stuff like this. So that's up to us to, 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 to make those links uh, better for them. But yes, that their, their reaction has been very positive. And what they really love is the fact that it isn't just a group of American students coming here and digging in isolation. There's Irish students, I see there's you. in. <laughs> in <laughs> <laughs> and there's, uh, so there's Irish students, there's students from all over Europe, and then there's local people who are interested. And that for them is, is such an amazing experience. So they get brought off to a GAA match or playing, uh, cards. playing cards or making brown bread or they really do embed themselves that's what you want if i was 21 years of age and i was going to a different country i don't <laughs> want to just go and find out about the archaeology i want to experience life it's a drink pints drink pints of guinness so <laughs> so yeah it's, is it just the american market that you target would you think of going to china or something like that China's china is one we haven't looked at but we american u.s canada australia australia mm -hmm. New Zealand, Italy, hmm? UK. UK. The English speaking yeah. predominantly, but 
Yeah. There's, I mean, there is huge potential there. Um, it's just these things don't happen quickly. No, and in a sense, I don't know whether it would be the best thing to happen if, if we arrive would, with three or four hundred yeah, students how next year. Trim cope how would Trim cope? How would we cope? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> some of those rich Americans might come up with some of the money. <laughs> I well, want to the Archaeological Institute of uh, America found out about us. Mm. We have this wonderful email that's still pinned up in the office. They were referred to us, and we got a, an email from a woman whose job title was the director of major gifts, <laughs> <laughs> Santa's little helper. And they, we went over to a gala, and they showcased the site, and they they I raised funds for us. <laughs> yes, we have a lovely photograph of him gazing at the orange. That's not true. <laughs> Gabriel uh, Next presentation, I'll bring the photo. So they donate. They money. raise money for us, and that money is being used one for signage, and two, we're we we're working with uh, James Hadley, who's a conservation architect, who's helping us to, do a to, to work out what are we going to do with the stone? How are we going to manage the stone? Because we showed Finn showed pictures of Melifont. It isn't just a case of exposing the stone. The stone is at risk once you expose it, so we need to know Frost how that's going to go. But that, you sort of go, oh my goodness, that's a terrible challenge, but why don't we bring architectural conservation students on site and get them to learn their trade by doing that conservation work? So there are ways around all of these issues, but the um, Americans money, love it. Um, money, yeah. so money and planning. And it, you know, once you can get the plan right, it's amazing how far a little bit of mine will go, but it's just getting those two things together. And there are times when the effort seems too great and times things come together and it's like great. So, you know, it's just persistence. In the process of waiting for your museum or whatever, mm -hmm. could you not have a, a, a visual museum here in the library on a computer just showing things that were already, you know, some of the things? That's a good idea. Well, we could have a... That's, yeah, that's a very that's good, that's idea. good idea. It because one could yeah. be a duration before you get what you want. <laughs> yeah, because one of the things we've just found it is, is a Facebook for the, for the site. Mm. Like, we have our student Facebook, which is, which is I suppose, more technical and, uh, and more about yeah. their experience. We've got a corner, so there's a spot here, and just even to put up finished plans and stuff but like that. But even if it's a touch screen um, that, yes. that, that, that everybody could use. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you go in... Uh, which one of these? I think it's Wicklow Jail. Mm. They have one. Yes, yeah, that's right. And Dundalk. There. Yeah. And, and from young to old, there's an interest, but it's easy to use too because it sort of touches up with it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Did the Titanic yeah. see it up there as well? Ian did the thesis, yes. Ian, where's the thesis? Oh, the library here? No, not yet. No. He's signing copies of it. <laughs> <laughs> waiting for it to get published. <laughs> <laughs> Are you working with any other challenges like Trim? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> We've got enough on our plate here at the moment. But there's enormous potential. Yeah. I mean yeah. Trim is... But you don't want to, I mean it's not like you don't want there's to enough hold. business to have a field school in every town in Ireland. But there are other things that could be, that could be done in other towns because the whole idea of getting towns to look at their own cultural heritage and to see it as something valuable for them, not purely in economic terms, but as, as a general benefit, would be a very positive turnaround. Mm. That's a, that gave a suggestion of putting it. It's a great idea. It's a brilliant idea. I hate to tell you, but a lot of people in Trim don't know anything about that. Mm. Mm. We know no, we don't, you're right, <laughs> because a lot of us all that ignorance, really, truthful ignorance. I lived here since I was five, right? Mm. And I found out about it last year. Mm. Isn't that shocking? Well, it's not shocking, in fairness, because all it was was, it was a name and a map saying Black Friday. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there wasn't that much information available. And I mean, even reading, say, Michael Potterton's book, which is wonderful, yeah. actually being able to say, oh, that's where it is. You know, people might have known that there was a Dominican Friday, but exactly where? And, and connecting the two is not necessarily that easy. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's a... But, that's changing, and there'll be signs up to it now, but and then you'll be played. Every, <laughs> every primary school child in Trim, in the six primary schools in Trim in the surrounding area, know about the Black Friday site, and they'll have all gone home, and what did you do in school today? And they're like, my children go, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but they'll go home and they talk about it, and that's how it can just slowly... Gradually. And it's not about, about placing ads in newspapers, it's just about generally... And it is a, the amount of people who didn't know there was just that there was a field there. Like yeah. this this great green space in Vines. Well, the, the 
My sister came see. to visit me last year and she went into the tourist office and asked for the <laughs> so, But this year they'll say, oh yeah, this is how you get that. So it's just every year you make it. More than a month now. Yeah. Yeah. I fought, I fought a guard there one night last year. You did? She yes. Did you see how that she was one guard. Black Friday archaeological sites. He said, what? Yeah. Really, he didn't actually know. But now, Derry, I've had a letter from them saying that they realised that there were break-ins and if there's anything they can do to help. So, again, we've got the guards on board. And this year, if there's a problem, they know where to come. So, again, it's just about building. I'm, I'm conscious of the time that the, yeah. the library is meant to close. And, and thank you so much to the library for facilitating this case.